So in this video, we're going to take a look at the XLOOKUP function. And it's really better than the HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP in every way. First of all, the single XLOOKUP function replaces both of those functions. And also, it's not prone to errors that can get caused by users inserting rows or columns. Overall, it's a better function, and you're going to see it's much more simple. Let's jump in and take a look at how it works. So in this area where it says XLOOKUP1, we're going to look at how the XLOOKUP function can work in a horizontal fashion. So let's pop into this cell and type equals XL. Right away, the function name comes up. We can hit the tab key. Now the lookup value, which is the first argument, is going to be the same. We're just going to select item number four, put in a comma. Well, now it's looking specifically for the lookup array. So where should it look for item number four? Well, we're going to select right here all the way across just to include these item numbers. Now we put in a comma and now it's asking for the return array and we're gonna select one row right here where all the commissions can be found. What we can do now is just close the bracket and hit enter. So now let's perform a test. Recall that when we were looking horizontally with the HLOOKUP, inserting rows caused a serious issue. So let's go up here and insert a row. Alt-I-R inserts the row. And as we can see down below, the XLOOKUP function is working correctly. If we pop into that function, we can see just why it's working. Because each one of these arrays is just one row. So it doesn't matter if we insert a row in between them. It works just fine. Now we can go up here and clean up this row or delete it by hitting shift spacebar and then control minus to take it out. So now let's build up an XLOOKUP function down here in a vertical fashion. So we're going to hit equals XL. The function name comes up. Hit the tab key. The lookup value is going to be here. Item number four. Let's put in a comma. For the lookup array, we're going to select all the way down here vertically and then we're gonna put in a comma, and for the return array, we're gonna select these commissions that are from here all the way down to here, then we can close the bracket and hit enter. Now it's always a good idea to test things. And recall that when we were looking vertically with the VLOOKUP, it was inserting columns which caused an issue. So let's pop over here into this cell and hit Alt. I C for insert column. So there's a new column there. And as we can see over here, our X lookup is working just fine. So we can go back over here and delete this column out. Control space bar to select it and then control minus deletes it. So just to finish things up, we want to make sure that the cells are correctly locked down so that we can copy these XLOOKUP functions. Let's pop into this first function here. We're going to select all the way across these two arrays, tap F4 to lock them down. Similarly here on this XLOOKUP, tap F2 and then highlight across with the shift key, tap F4 to lock them down and hit enter. Now, I hope you can appreciate from this video just why we like the XLOOKUP function so much. First of all, it's replacing both the HLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP, so it means that we only have to know one function from this point forward. The other thing is that there's really no issues with users inserting rows and columns with the XLOOKUP function, and we don't have to automate any third argument with a complicated rows function or a columns function. So we're seeing here that it's really better in every way. And in the next video, we're going to show you some added features features of the XLOOKUP, which we really like as well. We'll see you there. So now that we have these lookup functions all built up, we're going to introduce an error into the lookup functions by putting in an item number that isn't found on the list. And we're going to investigate in those functions how we can program it to return something back to us, indicating that it's not finding the item number on the list. Let's dive in and take a look. So if you could please make the following modification in your spreadsheet as well. Right in here for the first invoice, we're going to change the item number from 4 to 12. Now 12 is not found on the list up above, so it should cause an error. So let's just punch in right here, 12, and hit enter. And as we can see, we're getting error messages across here in all four of these lookup functions. 
Now, it's not the worst thing in the world to have these error messages pop up, but we may want something a little more descriptive. For instance, if it's not finding this item number 12 on the list, maybe we want it to return the text not found. So the way that you would do this in an hlookup function is to wrap the entire function in an if error function. Let's pop into the cell and take a look. We're going to tap F2. We're going to go all the way to the beginning, just after the equal sign here, and we're going to start typing in if error. And we can see the function name come up there, if error. We're going to hit tab. And that's going to also open the bracket. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, if there's an error inside this whole hlookup function here, then after the hlookup, we put in a comma and we're, it's now asking for the value if error. This is where we're going to put double quotes and we're going to type in a message. We're going to say not found like this. Close the double quotes, close the bracket for the if error, and now we can hit enter. Now to be consistent, we can do the same thing for the VLOOKUP. So let's pop into the cell with an F2. Let's use the left arrow to go all the way over here just after the equal sign, and we're going to start typing in if error, I-F-E, and we can see the function name come up right there down below. So now we tap the tab key. It opens the bracket for us. Now we go all the way to the end here, and we're going to put in a comma, and now the value if error again is going to be not found. Just like this, close the double quotes, close the bracket, and we can hit enter. So what we have now is a much better solution. It's telling us that the item's not found, which is much more descriptive and indeed an improvement. The problem with the HLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP is that if we look in there, we now have a really complex function, or functions we should say, if error, HLOOKUP, and rows, it's in fact requiring three functions to get all of this stuff done. In the next video, let's look at how we do this with the XLOOKUP, which is much more simple. We'll see you there. So what we saw in the last video is that if we want the computer to return a descriptive message back to us, telling us it can't find a certain item, then we need to add an if error to either an HLOOKUP or a VLOOKUP. What you're going to see here is that this functionality is built right into the XLOOKUP, so it's going to make it so much easier. Let's take a peek. So let's pop over here into this first cell for the XLOOKUP 1. We're going to tap F2. And as you can see here, we filled out the first 1, 2, and 3 required arguments for this function. But we can see here, there's a first optional argument right here. It says, if not found. So let's put in a comma. And what we're going to do here is in brackets, double quotes, in fact, we're going to put in the value not found just like this. And then we can close those double quotes and then we can hit enter. Let's do that same modification now to the vertical X lookup. We'll tap F2, we'll go to the end here, put in a comma, double quotes, type in not found like this, close the double quotes and hit enter as well. So we were just able to demonstrate one of the great optional arguments that's in the X lookup, but there's more than one. In fact, if we look in the function here, we can see that if we were to put a comma at the end right here, we're going to see that we have match mode as well. So we could do an exact match or all these other different types of matches below. Let's suppose that we just put in a zero, which it's defaulting to anyways. And then we put a comma. We have a last optional argument as well for search mode. So by default, it's searching first to last, but we could go last to first or we could do one of these binary searches as well. So let's just escape out of here without making any changes, just so we can see that there's other optional arguments that we can benefit from with the XLOOKUP as well. Now, looking at all of the options that are available for the match mode and the search mode is beyond the scope of this particular course. But one thing that we hope you've been able to see here through our demonstrations is that the XLOOKUP is so much better and more superior to the HLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP. We can get a ton of functionality just with the XLOOKUP, either horizontally 
or vertically without adding in a lot of extra functions that overcomplicate things. Let's jump ahead to the next video where we're going to finish up all of the work that's required on this particular tab. We'll see you there. So what we want to do here is finish up everything on this lookups tab. We want to take that error out that we introduced and also complete all the formulas all the way down to the bottom. Let's get started. So first things first, over here we change this item number from 4 to 12. Let's hit 4 and put enter so we can correct that right away and we can see that now we're getting the correct commissions again. Perfect. Now it would be a great idea to zoom out so we can see everything that we have to complete. So we're going to use Control alt minus a few times just to zoom out to a nice level so that we can see down to the bottom. Now over on the right hand side here, we can calculate the commission. And we really could use any one of these four columns to do it, but we'll use the XLOOKUP2 column to do this one. So let's go equals, and we're gonna say 2%, and then multiply through by the revenue, and that's gonna get us the commission. We'll just hit enter to get that done. So now we wanna copy things down. So we can use the shift key to highlight across, Hold down the shift key and also highlight down. And now we can hit a control D for a fill down. Now, as we can see, we're getting some error messages in here, which is a little peculiar since all of these item numbers are present on the original list up here. There must be an issue with one of our formulas that we're gonna to have to investigate. In fact, just a little pro tip, now that we've copied everything from here downwards, it's easiest to actually check right at the bottom where we've had the most movement from top all the way to bottom. So we're going to go down here and check across this row to see if the formulas are correct or not. So let's pop into the first one here, which is the H lookup. Everything looks fine. We can see this is locked and this is locked as well. Let's hit enter. Move across here, tap F2. Aha. Right here we can see a problem. This array should have been locked up here in this area, but it was obviously not locked when we copied it down. So we're going to hit enter and go up and fix that. So let's scoot up to the top here and tap F2. And we can see right away the issue is over here with these red cells. They're not locked at all. So let's highlight them with the shift key and tap the F4 key like this to lock them down. We're going to hit enter and then we're going to select down by going control shift down like this and then control D which is a fill down. Now things look like they're working but it's always a good idea to check our work. Let's go to the bottom here tap F2. We can see that these are locked correctly but this blue one was moving down. Looks good. Let's pop into the next one here for the first X lookup. These are both locked. This one's moving down. That's lovely. Let's go to the last one here tap F2. Again we can see that these are locked in place. This cell has moved down really nicely from top to bottom. Everything looks like it's working really well. The only thing left for us to do right down here is add in total. Remember, alt equals can put in an auto sum really quickly and then we hit enter and we're all done. Looks perfect. Now it was probably very obvious to you that we have a strong preference for the X lookup function for its functionality and its simplicity. But it's great if you understand also the HLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP because we can almost promise that you're going to encounter these lookup functions in other older Excel files. It's also great to know the advantages and disadvantages of upgrading to the XLOOKUP function so that you can convince others in your organization to replace these older HLOOKUPs and VLOOKUPs with XLOOKUPs. Let's jump ahead to the next video where we're going to start talking about all the date functions and the date functions which you'll need to get things done when you're doing financial analysis. We'll see you there. So in this chapter, we're going to be talking about date functions in Excel and how they get used in financial analysis. Date functions for some people can be really overwhelming because there's literally hundreds of different date functions in Excel. But what we find is that if you use a small list of hand-picked date functions, you can get most of the things done that you need to get accomplished inside of Microsoft Excel. We'll also be discussing periodicity a little bit. So with periodicity, you need to consider the periods of a financial model. For example, the most common financial models are annual models, but sometimes there's a need to break out quarterly estimates as well in a financial model, or even go down to the granularity of monthly models, which is done in financial planning and analysis, or fp &A. 
Each one of these different types of financial models introduces its own set of challenges, so we need to understand the best date functions and how to use them in order to accomplish what we need. We also need to understand the custom formats that are commonly used for dates to get them to display exactly the way that we want them. We're also going to look at some date functions which can be really helpful for modeling debt. Since debt payments may happen regularly on the first day of the month or perhaps on the 15th day of the month, we'll need to investigate the date functions which are appropriate to get those dates indexing forward through time. And finally, it's relatively common in financial analysis to need to calculate a stub period. For example, if the company has a December 31st year end, but we're taking control of the company on March 31st, then we would need to calculate a stub period for the company, which is effectively a portion of a full fiscal year. As we mentioned earlier, all of the date functions in Microsoft Excel can be a little bit overwhelming. What we aim to do in this chapter is point you towards the best date functions that are really, really helpful for getting your financial analysis done in Microsoft Excel. Let's jump into it and get started.